Welcome everyone uh, to another edition of the Vox Box at the European Parliament. This year we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. I'm now with very special guests, um, broadcasting directly from the European Parliament, stud studios in Brussels, to debate some of the main concerns and impressions European children have about the society they live in and their concerns for the future. The European elections are now over, uh, more than a uh, month behind us, really. And the young people here with me would like to hear from newly elected uh, members of the European Parliament uh, what you are doing, to, what you are going to do on topics such as school safety, climate change, family environment, and online behavior. So without further ado, um, I'll introduce our participants. On my right, from the European Parliament, I have Ms. Hilde Veltmans, who uh, has been a member of the EP since 2014 and mainly works on foreign affairs. Uh, from Alst in Belgium, uh, I have Milan, who's 20 years old. Uh, he studies law at the VUB in Brussels and started to do youth work at the age of 16. Since 2018, he is the European Youth Representative of the Flemish Youth Council, wow. representing the interests of the Flemish youth on European level. He tries to bring Europe closer to the daily life of youth. Welcome, you. Milan. Uh, and from Loch Christi, also in Belgium, um, we have Nelle, who's also 20, and um, she studies sociology at the University of Kent. She's the senior EUN Youth Delegate for Sustainable Development of the Flemish Youth Council, and she's also a board member of the Belgium Climate, Co Climate Coalition to represent Belgian youth. Wow. So here we go. Uh, welcome. The Thank welcome, you. everyone. Thank you. The format of this debate is quite simple. I will facilitate the conversation between you, um, and each young person will ask you, Ms. Uh, Maltman's a question on one specific topic, who in turn you will try and reply as concisely as possible. So let's hear the first question from Nelly. Yes, so thanks a lot. I'm very pleased to be to participate in this debate. It's a great opportunity for us to dis discuss politics, but also to be heard ourselves. The main European topic for a lot of young people is climate change. The European Union, and especially the European Parliament, is taking a lead again in the fight against climate change by setting necessary targets as 55% um, um, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and climate neutrality by 2050. Unfortunately, the national climate plans of member states do not reflect this ambition. What could the EU Parliament do to push member states to comply with these EU targets? Well, thank you very much for that interesting question. I think indeed the European Parliament has done a lot. I think here in the Parliament we really feel also the need to push more, to push forward more on climate. And so I think we voted a lot of good things, but the problem is indeed, like you said, the member state. So I think we should really push the member states more to invest in climate change, to do more, to have the binding targets and to fulfill them. And that's, I think, the role of the next parliament. I think we all know what we have to do. Is it enough we have done? No, we have never done enough. We only have one, one planet, so we have to do more. So I hope, and what I see is a lot of new young members are elected here. Also in my group, We New Europe, we have a lot of ambitious young people elected. So I think if we fight together, we can fight it. And we can push the member states more to do more. I also think with the climate marches, we have, we have had in Belgium with Anuna de Wever, we had had worldwide. I had it in my own city, very young people coming on the street asking me as an elder woman, do more. And so I think that also pushed us to, to even to be more ambitious. And that helps us. So it's a good thing that young people go to the streets and ask us to be active on climate change. So I think it was a good job. Thank you very much, very much, Ms. Waltman. Um, it's indeed another great issue and discussion. And I guess in this case, in the case of climate change and environment, more is more indeed. Yes. And we need to listen more to young people because they are the ones inheriting the problem. Yeah. Um, okay, now to, on to the next question, Milan. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. 
Um, so I also want to talk about the future, um, but from another perspective, from the angle of education, jobs, the future of work. Um, we see that the labor market is changing rapidly and um, it, it needs to make sure that, that young people, um, they know what is going to happen, they know what is going to change. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to make sure that they have the right skills for the jobs yeah. of the future. So um, what is the EU doing at the moment to make sure that young people have these right skills? And um, how can we make sure that young people uh, will have great jobs also in the future? Sure. Well, it's indeed so. Right? Jobs are changing a lot. The jobs of today are maybe not existing anymore in 10 years. I think that's also what we have seen uh, um, in the past. So it will happen in the future also. So I think what Europe is doing a lot is investing in innovation. I think that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. Also, pushing forward more Erasmus. Me, myself, I went to Madrid to have studies, to open up your eyes, to see the world. I think that's very important. We also push forward um, um, labor migration, that you can go and work in another country with the same social rights. I think that's very important because young people, and I, I myself, I feel like a young people. I also still like to go abroad, to look at other countries. When I was young, I really wanted to go and work everywhere. I mean, the world was really my country. And I think that's happening more and more. I think what Europe also pushed forward, I think the level of education. I think we can really be proud of the level of education we have in Europe, in the different member states. We have the Youth Guarantee Fund, which pushes forward member states to commit to help young people to find a good job. I think that's very important. We have to push forward the good skills, push forward innovation also labor migration. I think that's the future. Don't look only to stay in your own town to have a good job. You can find it elsewhere, you can visit the world. I think that's very important. And that's Europe. We don't have borders anymore. So I think that's very important. So I really feel that Europe is our future. Okay. I, I don't know if it answers to your question, but I think uh, young people have to look to other countries, look to other jobs. And we have to look forward and see which jobs will be good in the future, which job will not be there anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as policymakers to look at that and to stimulate all the education, all the universities to invest in the new jobs. For example, when I was young, mm -hmm. we didn't have mobility at university. Because mobility, we were driving, we were riding bikes. No, you have really university where you can study all about mobility because that's a problem for the future. So I think environment, it will be a study of the future. I think like, like when we were young to study for dietists, it was very rare. No, everybody is busy with his body, with what we eat. So I think we have to look forward what will be needed in the future. And innovation, technology is therefore very important. And we have to do that on a, on a local level also. Eh? I'm an elder woman of education in my hometown. And there we really invest already in the, for very young people to look which skills they have, to give them more languages, even when they have three, four years old. I think that's very important, to invest in education for very young people. Okay. Thank Thanks, Ms. Waldman. Um, at what cost, though? I think you had a, a, a follow-up question uh, to ask Ms. Waltman in relation to the pressure that goes on in youth. Yes, indeed. It's, it's true. It's very interesting what you said, and I, I do agree. Um, but I think we also need to look at the aspect of mental health and mental yeah, well-being, because yeah. yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of pressure in society as well. And yeah. I think uh, we need to make sure that young people uh, right now, but also when they will have a job, yeah, yeah. they need to make sure to have a, have a good life and then feel yeah. healthy. Um, what do you think about that? What can the EU yeah. do about Well, what I think the you should do is to push forward more on uh, um, combating burnouts. Mm -hmm. I think burnout is a very, very big problem. Um, we also see it with a lot of teachers in the schools. And then I think, how can you teach young people to find a job if you have a burnout? You can't give your passion when you don't feel good yourself. So I think to tackling burnout is very important. Also suicide. I myself, I studied a lot and I did a lot of research on suicide with young people because I really feel the pressure is very high. I saw young people around me when I was a, very, when I was a teenager. I lost some friends by suicide and I, I could not accept it. And so I think we should invest more to prevent suicide with young people. And I think mental health is very important. And it goes together also with climate, environment, nature in the world. 
So I think um, it's very important, yeah. So I will uh, support you on that battle. Thank you. <laughs> many thanks, Ms. Walton. Many thanks, Milan. This is a great commitment. Um, Related to this, and also to include children and young people uh, in those discussions, we have another question from Milan. Yes, I, I would like to know how you as an MEP um, <laughs> get into discussion with young people and how you take their considerations, their opinions uh, with you when you're here at the European Parliament in discussions uh, when you're doing votes. How do you <laughs> make sure the young people... Well, I'm a, I'm a mother with two young children. Uh -huh. I have very young children still, uh, six and eight. So at my home place, in my house, I'm discussing already with my daughter who is eight years old a lot about mama you have to do that and that. But I'm also an elder woman of education and youth in Centrede, the most beautiful city of <laughs> Europe I always say. I don't know if you have visited but it's a very nice city. But there of course I have a lot of discussions and with the teachers but also at the schools but also with the youth movement. Uh, I will go and visit the camps when they are out of camps in the holidays. So I think I have a lot of contact with youth. And here in the European Parliament, I'm vice president of the Intergroup on Children's Rights. So actually the children's rights, youth, is always on my mind. Because I really feel that you are the future. What I'm doing now is for your, your future. It's, not for, it's also for mine. I still feel young. But it's especially for the young people. So also here in the European Parliament, I look a lot on what's the effect what will this have an effect on the young people? Will it be good for their future? Will we prevent them from committing suicide, for example? And things like that. So I think I try to stay in contact a lot with young people. I go out still a lot where young people go out, uh, have a beer with them. And so I think I really are still integrated with young people because I don't feel my age. I feel much younger. Thank you. <laughs> Also, my body sometimes say different, but <laughs> we feel young. <laughs> and at the institutional level, do you think um, the EU is moving towards, and specifically the Parliament, into systematizing a bit more youth participation? I think it should be done more. What I, what I feel here, we have a lot of schools visiting the Parliament. And then, of course, we go and talk and we go in discussion with the young people. But I think, for me, young people should be allowed to vote it on the age of 16, not 18. Why not on 16? You're clever enough to go and vote on then. And I think that would be a good system because if you look at the Brexit, if only the young people would have voted, Brexit would never have happened because young people are smarter on Brexit than all the ones. I have to be a little bit prudent what I say now, but I think it's like that. So I think on the institutional level, we should do more. For me, referenda, uh, early, more uh, vote on more earlier age, it's a point. And for me, even trying to get more in discussion, although I think on social media, we also go in discussion a lot with young people. On Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook now is less with young people, I think. But I think we also do that. But on institutional level, we can do more. I agree on that. We should invest more in getting in contact, not only with young people, but with the people in general. Because Europe sometimes is too far from the people. And I think, we are busy with, with the future of all people all the time, but the people don't feel it like that. Indeed, thank you very much. Do you have any follow-up questions on that uh, subject or maybe on safety online? Anything you would like to ask or can we move on to the, to the, next, the next question? Um. Well, safety online is very important. I think uh, uh, I work a lot with child focus also on, on missing mm. children and on child porn pornography. I went to Europol. I think we should invest more in that. And Europol made it really a crime unit to invest more on child pornography. And so since we did that, since Europol did that, but, but I really felt like supporting it a lot, we really could, uh, could get more criminals on that, on that field. So I think we should do more to, to get the criminals on child pornography. I think it's, it's really necessary. Okay. Thank you very much. Indeed, um, it's a dangerous world online yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but people don't don't feel, and I go to schools to, to talk about that. Eh? People sometimes put things on Facebook, but they don't feel like the impact it has. So I went to a school, for example, and I put a really big picture of a of a of a photo I found on the Facebook of a girl of that class, and I made it really big. I like like 
very, very big. And so I rolled it out and I said, do you know that what you put on Facebook is like actually putting a big poster in the, in the street where all people of St. Trude walk to? And they said, no. I said, yeah, because it's open, the internet. Everybody sees it. And then you see that people, young people really starting to think, oh, is it like that? Because nobody wants to hang up his picture uh, in bikini on a very street where a lot of people pass, but they put it on the Facebook, mm. which is the same. Mm -hmm. So I think we still have work to do. I, I try to do it that on the local level, to, to make people aware of that. Thank you. We come now to a big question that many young people in Europe, but also adults, uh, have uh, an opinion on. Mm. Um, and it is a question of what kind of Europe uh, do we see now and for the future? Please go ahead, uh, Nelly. Yeah, so for a lot of young people, the EU is failing when it comes to the issue of migration. Refugees and migrants, um, among which there are a lot of children and young people, are dying on their way to Europe. As a result of the lack of uh, cooperation and EU solidarity between member states. This is not in compliance with EU values. Uh, what could be possible solutions according to you, but also what should the EU and especially the EU Parliament do to prepare for a possible wave of uh, climate refugees in the near future? Well, I'm very lucky, I'm very happy with your question because I think uh, you put the finger on the wound. I think uh, this, is, this is really a lack of Europe. I think uh, we have to uh, declare that you have failed of doing really migration. And I wrote a book, I don't know if you know it, but three years ago, Europol stated that in Europe, 10,000 non-accompanied migrant children went missing. 10,000. And so I asked myself, why don't we talk about that in the European Parliament? I was just elected at that time. And so I went to see uh, Europol, and I said, what can I do? I'm elected in the European Parliament. And uh, Brian O'Donnell told me, he was the, the man of Europol who made the declaration, he said, create awareness. And so I went visiting the camps in Calais and Dunkerque. I went to visit uh, refugee centers in Belgium. And I wrote a book on, on it. Where are they? Because also in Belgium, young people get missing out of our asylum centers. Two years ago, there were 124 children went missing in our centers, according to Child Focus. But according to, the, to um, all the, the Voorden, how do you say that? The Voorden, I don't know, the people who who accompany the children, they say there were more than 600 missing in Belgium. And nobody can tell me which figure is the correct one. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book on it, Where Were They? And really put forward strategies and a policy to do in Europe. I think we have to do a real uh, asylum and migration policy in Europe. I think the parliament voted a lot of things. Where does it go wrong? In the council. It are the member states who don't want to work on it. There we have to push forward. We have to protect the children. Because why don't we look for the children? Why don't we find them? We can't look for them. We don't have pictures. We don't have fingerprints. How can you look? Sometimes people, uh, children are reported missing after two weeks. How can you then go and look for it? When somebody is in Belgium, dog or cat goes missing, we put it on the Facebook. And a few hours later, you have that many reactions that you can find your animal again. But we don't do that for the children. So I think, for me, it's a subject I will continue to work on. I'm elected also in the Commission of Libe, where the subject will be tackled, and in the Intergroup on Children's Rights. So for me, the European policy should do much, 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 much more to protect the children in migration. For me, it's really my topic I want to work on in the future. And I think the European Parliament, we know what we have to do. We voted a lot of regulation, but the Council, we have to convince the Council to work on it. And now with Charles Michel, who is elected, I have his phone number. We will ask him <laughs> to do more on it. And hopefully he will do. That's great. Thank you very much. And on the issue of uh, climate uh, refugees... Um... That will be the subject of the future. Eh? We put it already in a lot of text. So that's already a good thing, eh? that a mm -hmm. lot of people feel that, yeah, climate refugees, we have to recognize them. We have to also look how we can take them here in Europe. And I think we can. If we all work together, we can manage it. 
thank you very much. I think we could go on and on uh, for a few more minutes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> There's so much to discuss, and this is I a great... the young people here, they can advise me then. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up, um, and uh, we're finished for this episode. I would like to thank you all very much for participating uh, in this most interesting debate, and stay tuned for the next edition of the Voxbox. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.